you know, I can't be more specific. Did you ever discuss SEER techniques with Mr. Messrs. Gonzalez, Addington, Rizzo, you, or any other senior lawyers with whom you met regularly? Um, I believe I did discuss SEER techniques with other people in the administration. Prior to the December 2 memo signed by the Secretary of Defense? Uh, yes. And would that have happened on more than one occasion? I can't remember. And what was the gist of those conversations? Um, well, I think that, well, first off, my memory is, is not great. Um, but if if I uh, if I were dis to discuss anything further, I think I would I would have to talk about classified information. But would you remember it better if this were a classified setting? Well, I wouldn't be able to discuss it. Well, I understand that, but you say your memory is not great, and then you say well, you want to talk in classified setting. No, sir. What I well, I don't know what I. I don't, I don't know what the transcript might say, but what, I, uh, um, what I'm trying to respond to your question is, um, did I ever discuss SEER techniques with others in the administration? The answer is yes, and, if, and maybe, that's, maybe that's the answer to your question. No, you answered that clearly. The other one was, what was the gist of those conversations? I could not... I could not tell you the gist of those conversations without going into classified information. But you do remember them? Uh, I don't remember them any more clearly than what I've, what I've just said, that I have seen information of this nature before. I don't know precisely when, um, and I cannot discuss it further without getting into classified information. I, I really... You say you don't remember it any more clearly than what you've said. Therefore, going into classified session isn't going to give us any more information than what you've said, which is you had conversations, but have, your memory's bad. That's all you've said. Correct. And that's all you remember. Correct. I don't know what going into classified session would add to it then. Okay. Senator Graham. Thank you, Mr. Haynes, and, and I, under, I appreciate six years ago is a very long time. Try to put, try to put this in, in context of this puzzle, so to speak, at least from my point of view. Uh, the goal was to get better information from people at Guantanamo Bay. That was the desire of this whole project. Um, we are afraid we are going to be attacked again. We weren't getting the information we were hoped to, to obtain, so we are going to try to come up with a new program to get better information. That was sort of the task at hand. I think the goal was broader than, well, the, the goal was not Guantanamo Bay. Okay. Well, the goal was to get better information. The goal was to understand what capabilities the country had to elicit information from terrorists who had attacked and might attack the country. Now, I totally understand that. I'm, I'm not saying that's not a bad goal. I, I, I just want to know. There's, there's a reason for everything. The reason this project and all this talk about interrogation techniques and what we can and can't do was a result of trying to get better information from high-value targets. Well, that would be an objective of people who were involved in interrogation, yes, sir. Okay. So... You and others were tasked with the job of trying to come up with new programs that were not on the books at that time that would allow us to get better information. Is that not what started all this? No, sir. I wasn't tasked with, uh, with such a project. I was, I was a, a senior lawyer, the senior lawyer in the Defense Department. And one of the missions that our department had was the detention and and uh, questioning of terrorists captured in the war on terror. Right. Uh, as the senior lawyer, I had to be, or felt I needed to be aware of what my client was up to. Uh, I was also a, a uh, senior member of the administration right. involved in interagency 
Right. I mean, I, activities. I, right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing this. I mean, I'm not trying to say anybody did anything wrong. It makes perfect sense that we're going to try, if we don't have adequate information, let's look for a way to get better information. And uh, The Bybee memo, are you familiar with the Bybee memo, the legal analysis about the Convention Against Torture and other statutes and treaties? Uh, I, I believe I am, yes, sir. I think that there have been a lot of, uh, a lot of labels and names associated yeah. with, with, uh, with a memo that I understand to be in August. Were you aware that it was the opinion of the Department of Justice Office of Legal Counsel that unless there was major organ failure involved, it would not be a violation of the Convention Against Torture? Yes, sir. Okay, so there's a line of legal reasoning that you're aware of that was pretty aggressive when it came to existing laws in terms of, well, I would argue that something short of major organ failure, not being torture, is a pretty aggressive point of view. Now, were you aware of that before uh, Secretary Rumsfeld approved the interrogation techniques? I don't, I don't know when I became aware of that, Senator. Okay, um, fair, fair enough. Now. These inter interrogation techniques. I don't, I don't remember that. I understand. These interrogation techniques that Se Secretary Rumsfeld, Rumsfeld initially signed off on the three categories. I think that there were 35. Is that correct? No, sir. I think there's a lot of confusion in, okay. out out there and, and okay. perhaps in this room. When you talk about 35 techniques, what I think about is a product of the working group, which which operated from January of 2003 until sometime in the end of March 2003. Mm -hmm. When you talk about what Secretary Rumsfeld approved for the interrogation of <coughs> Mohammed al Qatani, the 20th hijacker, um, you're talking about a decision in November of 2002. There were not 35 techniques that I know of associated right. with that analysis. Right. No, I, no, I understand. So, well, that's a good point. Uh, the interrogation of the 20th hijacker, Al Satani, uh, if I got his name right. Katani, is that? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, we know who we're talking about. I think it's about. Al okay. Yes, sir. That involved the use of dogs and having him stripped naked in front of female personnel. Is that correct? That's what this report found? Uh, which report are you referring uh, to? The what? The Schmidt furlough report. Okay, well, Senator, let me try to untangle that because I think there's a there there's some there's some conflation there. Uh, I sat through the earlier testimony of the earlier panels and frankly was enlightened uh, from some things I don't think I ever knew and some things that I'd forgotten. Um, but the, the immediate previous panel uh, went into great detail about what was approved by the Secretary of Defense in de December of 2002 for use with al Qatani, the 20th hijacker. Mm -hmm. and Two of the items in Category 2, as I recall, and I don't know if those documents are in here that I can, I can look at or not. If it's important, you can point them to me, involved clothing and use of phobia. Right. And Captain Dalton and Colonel Beaver, or excuse me, Admiral Dalton, I should say, Admiral Dalton and Colonel Beaver uh, testified at great length for this panel uh, about what was approved by the Secretary of Defense and what was not approved by the Secretary of Defense. And I think they were very clear that the very widely held understanding among people who were knowledgeable about what was approved in each of those two categories is not as you've described it. Uh, the use of dogs was not intended to be or authorized to be dogs in an interrogation room with the detainee. It was to be muzzled dogs walking perimeter. Okay. Well, well the, the report the report found that it was a muzzle dog in a room. Well, let me let me get to that in a minute. And okay. the other the other thing that was authorized and widely understood um, by people knowledgeable about the decision was that um, removal of clothing clothing was not nudity. Okay. So well, that's what was approved. Now, I, let me I got, okay. Sir, but I haven't responded to your right, question. Right, right. Now, you you then jumped to say that it involved use of dogs in a room and naked people. Well, you, and, what, right. and what I think you're referring to, and uh, I've looked at it since this exchange that you had, was a, a, um, an investigation by a Lieutenant General Schmidt right. uh, in, in conjunction with the General or Admiral mm -hmm. Furlow mm -hmm. 
years after the fact, right. looking into some belatedly disclosed um, emails that came to light at the headquarters level two years after the fact. And, and General Schmidt investigated uh, some 24,000 interrogations conducted between right. early 2002 and early 2005 when he issued his report and identified less than a handful of problematic interrogations, right. two of which you've identified. Right. One was when somebody walked into a room with a dog, right. and, and I've got the pages here. Uh, 